Hey everyone and welcome. The last Asus Zephyrus G14 that I've tested was the 2024 model in a version with an RTX 4050 mobile. And my thumbnail back then said the sound of silence because it was so quiet while gaming on it. This one has the RTX 5080 mobile and most likely because of that it's not quiet anymore. So in today's tested configuration, the G14 comes with an AMD Ryzen AI 9 HX370 processor with 12 cores and 24 threads. 64 GB of soldered DDR5 RAM with 8000 mega transfers and the mentioned NVIDIA RTX 5080 mobile with 16 GB of GDDR7 VRAM, which in here can use up to 120 Watt, but that's including dynamic boost. So in games that's usually around 100 to 110 watt. So that's not a full powered 5080 as the maximum for that would be 150 watt instead. While it depends on where you live, it will be available with a vast variety of GPUs. The RTX 5050 mobile, the 5060, the 5070, the 5070 Ti and this 5080. And it will also be available with an AMD Ryzen 9 270 or only 32 GB of soldered system RAM instead. So your experience might vary quite a bit from mine since, especially for the lower end GPUs, it uses less power. So keep that in mind. But all the versions will come with a fast 2TB PCI Express Generation 4 SSD, which you can easily upgrade, but there is no second slot available. They all have the same awesome 3K 16x10 OLED screen with a high resolution of 2880 by 1800 pixels at 120Hz, including G-Sync, and it has a good color accuracy. And since it's an OLED display, it has great latencies of around 1 milliseconds or less. The build quality, the keyboard, the speakers, the battery, etc. Everything else should be the same. So let's look into that. So in here we are getting a 73 watt hour battery and a 200 watt charger, which looks like this. It's about medium sized with a proprietary connection in all configurations. It has an OK 1080p webcam, fast Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4. And you can charge and use all the versions with a 100 watt USB-C charger. While with that, the performance will of course be much lower. By the way, today's tested configuration is the most expensive one with around 3,800 euros or around 3,600 dollars. So yeah, that's an upper class laptop for sure. Okay, so let's talk about the chassis and the build quality first. It's basically the same as the 2024 model. It also has the slash animation at the back. It's extremely portable with only 1.54 kilogram. It has a very good stability. The whole aluminum chassis feels absolutely premium and you immediately know that you're having a valuable piece of hardware on your table. It has very little screen wobble, it has tight gaps, good hinges, a very stable RGB lit keyboard, which I really like typing on, and a decent, but not mind blowing, touchpad. And once again, it has exceptionally good back and front speakers. Just have a listen. Oh, and it also supports Windows Hello via the webcam and Windows Home 11 is pre-installed. Now, as mentioned before, this version is not nearly as quiet as the 4050 version from last year. That is because the GPU is using much more power and getting much warmer with up to around 85 degrees Celsius under full load using the highest of the performance modes, which is called Turbo. In performance mode, the laptop is not as loud under load, but it's not that much of a difference really. On silent mode, you can still do some AAA gaming, but the GPU then only runs with 45 watt and the CPU with only 25 watt in games. And here I've noticed that I had to crank down the settings quite a bit as for Cyberpunk 2077 with ultra settings at the native display 1800p resolution, the performance drop was so significant it became unplayable while at 1200p with only high settings, the difference was much smaller, which is really weird to be honest. So, well, <laughs> keep that in mind again. And here we can have a quick listen to the fan noise of the three performance modes. However, the laptop can get completely silent and the fans actually turn off on lighter tasks um, and if it's on idle, if you're using the silent mode. 
but on turbo mode, the fans slightly pulsate on idle. <laughs> and by the way, the laptop gets super hot above the keyboard while gaming. Like, oh my god, this is actually burning my fingers hot. Above 52 degrees Celsius. And at some points on the bottom, it gets just as hot. So don't use it on your lap. And unfortunately, the area where you place your hand wrists also gets at least pretty warm with around 40 degrees Celsius. You, I mean, you won't burn yourself, but it's noticeable. And that kind of surprised me. So if you're sensitive to that, mm, the keys are okay though. Let's also have a quick look at the ports. On the left side, there's the power plug, an HDMI 2.1 port, a USB-C 4.0 port with display port support, and USB-C charging is possible here a USB-A 3.2 generation 2 port and a 3.5 mm audio jack. And on the right side, we're getting a fast micro SD card reader, another USB-A 3.2 gen 2 port and a USB-C 3.2 gen 2 port, which again supports display port. And there are no ports at the back of the laptop. I did have some issues with the Asus Armory Crate software as I was not able to disable the Nvidia GPU for some reason. I had to fix that using the free alternative app Gihalper instead, but after that it worked with Armory Crate as well, so it might be a bug and it might just have been stuck. In the Armory Crate software and the MyAsus app, you can configure the laptop to your liking and also set up your own preset for the system power to some extent and tune the fans for yourself. But it's good to know Gihalper is working as well if you prefer that as an alternative. Also, I even had to reinstall Asus Armory Crate because it would not let me change the slash lighting at the back of the laptop anymore at some point. Um, the option just disappeared overnight for no reason. A quick look at the battery runtimes of the 73 watt hour battery. 13 hours and 12 minutes on idle with 20% display brightness and activated Wi-Fi using the battery saving mode and around 9 hours watching YouTube with 50% brightness and headphones at 20% loudness. Gaming on battery is possible with less performance for around 60 to 80 minutes. I also want to point out that I did have a specific issue with the G14 when it went to sleep, like when you closed the lid or when the sleep timer kicked in. In some cases, that caused the laptop to kind of freeze and I was not able to wake it up again. I just had to push down the power button for some seconds to completely turn it off and then I could turn it on again. I mean, this is a known error for Windows, but it occurred quite a lot in this model. And one time I was putting it into sleep mode on purpose to put it into my backpack. And when I unpacked it two hours later, the whole laptop was pretty warm and the battery was drained to nearly 0%. So it definitely has issues with sleep mode here. I mean, that could be fixed by software updates, but I wanted you to know it happened. Opening the laptop for upgrades is pretty straightforward. Release the small Torx screws, um, but don't forget the two ones beneath these small rubber feet, and then you're in. Though there's not a lot you can do besides upgrading the two terabyte SSD, change the battery and the Wi-Fi module, and that's it. The Ryzen AI9 HX370 with its 12 Zen 5 cores delivers good results for multi-core tasks while the single core is okay for the Cinebench tests, though not the best you could get these days. In PC Mark 10, the G14 scores a high 8861 in total. For the Blender benchmark, it scored 5736, which is pretty close to a full powered RTX 5070 Ti, but quite a bit less of what a full powered 5080 mobile can do. And here's a quick look at the results of the Pudgeot system benchmarks for Premiere Pro and Photoshop. And before we're taking a look at the performance in some games, here are the results for the 3D Mark benchmarks. And first, let's quickly compare the 5080 mobile in this laptop against a full powered RTX 5070 Ti mobile in an MSI Vector 16HX and a 85 watt RTX 5070 in a Gigabyte Aero X16. In Cyberpunk 2077 at 1440p and ultra settings without DLSS or frame generation, the Hamstruck 5080 is in fact a bit slower than the full-powered 5070 Ti mobile, but still 40% faster than the similar powered RTX 5070 mobile. In Assassin's Creed Shadows at 1440p with ultra settings and DLSS plus frame generation turned off, the 5080 is basically as fast as the full-powered 5070 Ti mobile and 32% faster than the 5070 non-Ti. And for some reason, in Far Cry 6 at 1440p and ultra settings, the full-powered 5070 Ti was a lot faster than the RTX 5080, which was only a bit more than 10% faster than the 5070. So that probably might be CPU-related. 
In Hogwarts Legacy, I was using ultra settings with DLSS on balanced, but frame chain was turned off using the display's native resolution, and that resulted in very playable 77 FPS on average, while using frame chain by 2 actually makes sense in this game in my opinion. Both the big VRAM size and the 64GB of system RAM definitely come in handy here. And as we can see, the 5080 mobile mainly uses around 75 to 100 watt in this title. But that's actually not that big of a surprise as Hogwarts Legacy is pretty demanding on the CPU as well, so that could become a bottleneck of some kind. For the Oblivion remake, I was using the high preset with DLSS on performance and frame chain turned on with ray tracing on medium settings at 1800p. That resulted in good average FPS of around 95 to 140 FPS depending on the area. But the 1% lows have been quite terrible with around 20 FPS due to micro stutters every once in a while walking around the map. That could be a bug with the game engine or the drivers, while the game is pretty demanding on the hardware in general. We also could of course deactivate ray tracing, but that way the game just looks a lot flatter. I was testing Cyberpunk 2077 at 1800p with ultra settings plus DLSS on performance, which now looks really good, especially on a 14 inch screen and frame generation was turned off. That resulted in playable 65 FPS on average and 1% lows of 40. But I also gave that game a try with ray tracing on ultra settings, while here I also turned on frame generation by 2 in combination with DLSS on performance. The YouTube compression will destroy a bit of the sharpness, but especially on the small 14 inch screen, it still looks fantastic that way and feels responsive enough for my taste. Though again, the 1% lows haven't been good with only around 26 FPS, while with around 80, the average FPS were still okay. Indiana Jones and the Great Circle looks great at 1800p with ultra settings and DLSS on performance, while frame generation was turned off, around 70 to 90 FPS. And as you can see, once again, the GPU often doesn't use more than 75 watt here, so far from the maximum of 120 watt. Surely, that has to do with the high temperatures as well. Furthermore, fully turning on ray tracing in combination with frame gen by 2 now resulted in around 78 FPS on average, with 1% lows of 32. It's still playable, the responsiveness is okay, and the game now looks noticeably better. And last but not least, for Forza Horizon 5, I was using the native 1800p resolution with MSAA by 2, frame gen and DLSS were turned off, with the ultra preset. That resulted in very good 134 FPS on average and good 1% lows of 95. Perfectly playable, absolutely no complaints here, and the GPU is even able to pull over 100 watt in some scenes. I didn't test stuff like CS2 or Apex Legends, as these kind of games will of course run with high FPS way above 120 if needed. And in general, any existing game out there should run just fine with at least high or even ultra settings right now. Okay, so the display resolution is quite high for the G14, and so using DLSS is almost mandatory in most demanding games, but on such a small display, I think that's a really good idea. Of course, it's a powerful GPU, even at around 80 to 100 watt, and the 16 GB VRAM should be fine for quite a while. The 64 GB of system RAM should be fine for the rest of the laptop's life, by the way. Though keep in mind that due to the smaller form factor and the lower wattage, you're not getting the full RTX 50 mobile performance here. But overall, the G14 is a great 14-inch gaming laptop once again, but be aware of the fan noise, the heat, um, and possible issues due to the Armory Crate software and the issue with the sleep mode. Other than that, it's a very snappy system, a well-built laptop and a great companion for literally all use cases you throw at it. And that's already all for today's video. If you enjoy the content, make sure to hit that like button and or subscribe to the channel. Thank you. Also, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye and tschüss.